Well, this is Dr. Stan back here at Radio Liberty, coming to you from the hills, overlooking beautiful and picturesque Monterey Bay, and bringing you the news behind the news, the story behind the story. Hoping to convince you that reality is usually scoffed at, illusion is usually king. But in the battle for survival of Western civilization, it's going to be reality and not illusion or delusion that's going to determine what the future will bring. And I have to remind you the views that are expressed here are not those of the owners, management, staff, sponsors, or supporters of this station. They happen to be my views, the views of our guests, the views of our callers. And if you're out there across America, we look forward to your calls at one triple eight two four liberty here in the Central Coast at four six four eight two nine five and. But right now, hold your calls, because we have with us uh, Carol Matriciana. Hi, Carol. How are you doing? Hello, Stan. How lovely to speak to you again, and thank you for allowing me to be a guest on your show. Well, I, I've been telling people that, of course, you have uh, had a lot of experience. You've studied the occult. You've, uh, you've written a wonderful book on that. In fact, long before we ever heard of Pat Matriciana, we'd heard of the famous Carol Matriciana. What was that book you wrote? Well, one of them, the very first one, was Gods of the New Age. That was it, right. And, of course, now you're working with... with um, with um, uh, Jeremiah Films, and uh, but you were telling me when we were talking up in San Francisco uh, about w- young girls and witchcraft, and I, I really think that uh, people have to understand that uh, there is a growing movement, uh, and how does this work with the computers? I don't quite understand. Well, um, what has been very, very interesting in monitoring, um, and, and what we were talking about is, in a sense, um, what was called the New Age in, in uh, well, of course, it was called Hinduism and Guruism in the 60s and 70s, but it started being called the New Age, and by the time our book, The Gods of the New Age, and our film, The Gods of uh, the New Age, came out, um, we could see that witchcraft and paganism was taking on a whole different name and a different sort of tantalizing fascination. And what I was bringing to your attention is how much this religion of witchcraft, Wiccan, earth worship, and the New Age has changed in, um, since the advent of the Internet, and how um, uh, the Internet is being used to proselytize young Wiccans and... um, you know, the whole climate has just changed. This is becoming a very fascinating and um, tantalizing religion with all the new young uh, television programs that are coming in, the charmed, bewitched. In the old days, the bewitched where what's-her-name wiggled her nose has now changed to actually uh, the teens being taught on on um, television programs like Charmed and others actually how to be involved in rituals and how to win your man, how to put magic spells on to have the job you want, the um, person that you want attracted back to you. And the Internet, if you look through, there are all sorts of websites that can tell you how to um, become a witch, be, be, become entrenched to know more of the uh, Wiccan pagan religion through friends on the internet. Well, of course, it uh, you know young people are looking for something, uh, and of course we just did a program uh, with a gentleman who sells Bibles, and he was saying you know so many of the young people are are turning to Christianity, uh, yet there are so many young people are going the other way as well. That That is the frightening thing. And uh, it would appear that there's an increasing polarization of society because everybody's looking for something. And if they don't find Christianity, they're going to find this other force uh, where they can get really, truly supernatural power. And it's not imaginary. I mean, some of it, of course, is phony, but some of it is really very, very real. You can tap into an energy out there you don't want to, and I will tell you, I don't even think that you should want to dabble into it or look into it, but it is there, and you have to understand that it has always been there. And you read the Bible, and you find that many times the shamans and the priests and uh, Pharaoh's priests did have supernatural power, but you want to avoid it at all costs uh, because, the, of course, the, the price that you pay for that supernatural power is eternal damnation. You're absolutely right. And I think the thing is that now it's becoming such a, um, 
in a sense, fashionable alternative, and this is the very thing. It's it's almost overlooked by parents because it is because it is a fashion. Like many parents wonder why their children are wearing black or have got the um, the black lipstick, the the black eyes, the dark nail varnish, and it all seems as though it's a fashion. But it is pursuing a fashion, the gothic culture, the goth fashion, which is rooted in um, tantalizing the young teen into um, witchcraft. And, of course, she doesn't even know that she's getting involved because she's, in a sense, joining a, a club of um, teenagers that... Um, meet, wear the same clothes, the same type of fashions. The, 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 I mean, it, it is an interesting community. And, of course, listen to the same music and go to the clubs to dance together. And they don't realize that they're getting pulled into a spiritual dimension because the void with uh, prayer being taken out of schools, the Ten Commandments being taken out of schools, the Bible, all this sort of thing that... You know, there is a void which teenagers want to um, have filled, and if the, if the biblical morality isn't there, it'll get filled with all sorts of other things. And, you know, here we are approaching the, um, the, the April 20th, a year ago, in Columbine, Colorado, where there was that absolutely devastating slaughter um, by two occultists. And uh, when you look into the background of Eric and Dylan, the two murderers that had every intention of using this particular day for nearly a year, they had planned to um, burn alive hundreds of kids on Hitler's birthday in their school, to burn down the school um, uh, building entirely, and to give homage, in a sense, to neo-Nazism and uh, anger and hatred. And here they went through the corridors in their black trench coats when the propane bomb that was meant to go off at 11.15 was not detonated. These two uh, furious young men um, armed themselves with concealed weapons and went down the corridors of their school specifically to gun down their classmates who believed in Christianity. And they asked the question, do you believe in God, before they shot them down, because this is the anger and frustration and the spiritual battle that is going on, that they either choose the light or they choose the dark. And I think that people really don't understand that the decision of the United States Supreme Court to take God and the Ten Commandments and any a religious uh, representation of replica uh, out of public places and out of public schools was a manifestation of anti-Christianity. I mean, these people knew what they were doing. And now, for instance, it's perfectly all right to teach the occult in school. It's all right uh, to build occult monuments as they had over in San Jose, uh, Temple to Qua Quasimodo, I, I can't even pronounce what it is. It's the uh, the uh, the Mexican god that uh, uh, that's been around for a long time. They used to sacrifice people too. You can build that on public property. You can build a monument to the occult god, but not to the god of the Bible. Now, why? Uh, because it is all part of the spiritual battle, and it is in our courts as well. Uh, but nobody wants to to mention that. I mean, we honestly think that the Supreme Court found a wall of separation between church and state. No, they created one. Why? Because they wanted to destroy Christianity. And until people understand that, uh, none of the things going on make sense. And the tragedy in, in Columbine uh, really was anti-Christian. Now, they're trying to play that down. Everything's being done to, uh, to, uh, to conceal what really motivated these young people and the satanic influence in their lives. Well, you know, Stan, um, with the anniversary of this absolutely horrible slaughter coming up, uh, we at Jeremiah Films are putting out a film next week called As a Burning Fire, um, taken from the words of Jeremiah, where, they, where Jeremiah is getting so upset because um, every time he mentions the Word of God or wants to talk about um, the Lord, he's punished, he's put in jail, he's uh, ostracized so cruelly, and he says that he, was, he wasn't going to do anymore, and he said, but thy word was in my heart as a burning fire shut up in my bones. And that's what these martyrs were doing. They were talking the word of God. They were 
Um, they were known for their Christian faith, and we're going to put out in a film which is going to be out next week what has happened since this massacre a year ago, this awful tragedy. Has it been turned to triumph? And we can see by following up this last year to see what has been happening. And I come back to what you mentioned about your last guest, the one that was uh, discussing Bibles, that there is an incredible awakening. Here are the victims of Columbine, the family members who survived, whose um, brothers or sisters were killed, who are going around the country challenging um, their peers to stand up and pick up the blood-stained torch that was dropped by the martyrs. And even though the press and the politicians will not give credit to God, these kids, this young generation, are going out there and uh, are lifting up the name of God very courageously on their campuses and with young people. It's terribly, terribly exciting. But, of course, you see ABC, CBS, NBC, uh, Time, Newsweek, U.S. News. They're none of them going to bring these things out oh. uh, because they do not want the truth to come no, out. Now, I hope you're going to send me a copy of that a video when you get it, and I'm Dan, sure we can you can get it out here. You are on the top of my list, and you're <laughs> going to be one of the first people, and, and you should be receiving a press release on it next week week and uh, you will get your preview copy and I hope that your listeners will pick up the torch where the martyrs um, torch fell from their hands bless their hearts I mean they were strategically and poignantly asked do you believe in God before um, these two demented Satanists these occultists who um, clearly clearly hated Jesus Christ, and there is a videotape of them up where they are actually cursing the name of Jesus, and they, of course, they videos, videoed themselves doing all these peculiar dramas, and um, and this, these tapes have fallen into the hands of uh, the police, and of course, all these things are muffled where they will not show that these two clearly were anti-Christian, anti their Christian classmates, and specifically targeted some of those that had been trying to talk to them about Jesus Christ as an option and an alternative to the dark arts that they were involved in. No, but do, did do, you know that Columbine actually was one of the experimental schools set up many, many years ago to be one of the advocates of the 2000, the Goal 2000 program? And didn't they have all sorts of death and suicide education there? Yes. And when their peers went, went to the police saying that these two were um, radically violent and, and very peculiar in, you know, in their behavior, the police, uh, just nobody took it seriously. There were warning signs out. They had these horrible, terrible uh, threats and violence on their web pages that anybody could have clicked into. They re arranged the video game of doom and changed it to their um the columbine corridors and classrooms i mean it it is horrendous that um no. what what these two young men in their hatred and violence and bitterness against um fellow human beings and specifically against christianity were you know went out and did had they been anti-Muslim or anti-Jewish, I am sure the press would have covered this thing to death. But as it was, um, in fact, there were even some negative comments about the uncensored CNN funeral coverage that uh, some liberal secular media people out there felt was too uh, evangelistic. And if you can believe it, even the 13 crosses that were raised to these those that died at Columbine, who were slaughtered and killed at Columbine, those crosses were taken off the public, the school grounds, because certain secular humanists took offense at that, those memorials being up there. But you know, Carol, we really are missing the boat. We should call these people what they are. They are anti-Christians. Mm -hmm. And nobody wants to use that word. Mm -hmm. And yet, that's exactly what they are. Now, did you get some of that film footage uh, for your film itself? Uh, some of the film footage of, uh, of Klebold and... Uh Oh, the, the Eric and Dylan, the two right, killers? Right, right, No, the police took that. In fact, this is one of the interesting things that the parents, there are some parents that are terribly upset that those films were released to the news, to Time 
I, I believe it was Time or Newsweek, and not to the parents. Um, we've got a lot of the um, um, press footage that's included, and we've got some of the most incredible first-ever interviews of the uh, victims um, and, and what they say, how God has, what, what Satan and what was intended for evil has been turned around for good, and, and despite um, the, the evilness, you know, the Lord has turned the ashes into tragedy, and from tragedy we come to triumph, I should say, that the ashes have been turned around to beauty to see that the youth are going out very dedicated to bringing other youth into an awareness of um, uh, the Christian elements that have been pushed out of society. So that's the interesting news coming out of it. And of course, that, uh, that part of it is not being covered. So Jeremiah Films, I feel, once again with our <laughs> cutting-edge documentaries are going to have another blockbuster coming out very soon. I'm really looking forward to it. And of course, uh, you know, uh, I, I really believe that uh, your film, The Clinton Chronicles, was primarily uh, one of the major factors in uh, the, the Republican Revolution of 1994, and I think that the other side's never forgiven you for it. We've got John calling from uh, North Carolina. John, it's, it's after midnight back there, isn't it? Yes, it is. It's good to have you. Uh, do you have a question or comment? Yeah, I've got a comment of, uh, about your, uh, your guest tonight. She said that, you know, Klebold and Harris, you know, with their deal with Columbine, uh, you know, she said that they were uh, neo-Nazis, or that the, that the media portrayed them as neo-Nazis. Well, you know, it's kind of a funny thing to understand that Klebold is a Jew. So, so in order to portray them as neo-Nazis, it's kind of, uh, I think, it's wrong. Uh, I, I, I believe that they were under uh, satanic forces uh, to go in there and shoot. I don't think it really had anything to do with Hitler's birthday, but I believe that they betrayed them as as such, so they could control other portions of the population. Well, let's get uh, uh, Carol's uh, remark on that. Of course, you have to understand that Adolf Hitler was an occultist, and uh, people, of course, have never been told that. Uh, Winston Churchill did everything he could to even keep that from being brought out at the uh, the Nuremberg trials, according to the book Spiritual Politics by uh, Carolyn McLaughlin and Gordon Davidson. Uh, but of course, there were tremendous occult overtones to everything about the, the Nazis. Uh, did you hear uh, John's remarks there, Carol? I did, Dr. Stan, and I, I appreciate what you said, John, and I think it is one of those in extraordinary, confusing smoke screens that the press calls them neo-Nazis, and yes, Klebold is a Jew, and it, it's very interesting that these things are confused and they won't bring in the spiritual dimensions. Of course, but they, you wouldn't expect the media to be honest because uh, it has been taken over by the anti-Christians. That, that's, the, that's the tragedy, and there's just the alternative media and Jeremiah Films that are bringing out the truth. It's not, it's not so much that, you know, I'm against Jews because I'm not. You know, I, I, you know, there's a lot of good Jewish folks but the thing is, the thing it is, is like today, if you speak out, man, it's, 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 they call you either a racist or they call you a anti-Semite or they call you a you know a neo-Nazi monster. Well, the thing is that that's why you do not want to put yourself into a defensive position. Early on, uh, 37 years ago, when I got started in this business, I ran into a fellow named Bill Richardson, who ultimately became a Senator Bill Richardson in California. And he told me that there were two things you learned in these free and open discussions. Number one is uh, you never let the enemy change the subject, because when you're winning, he'll want to change the subject. The other is you never be in a defensive position. And, of course... When you put the point out the fact that these people on the other side are anti-Christian, they are in the defensive position, and we're telling the truth. Okay? Right. Well, yeah. yeah but uh, the whole thing, basically, you're absolutely right. It was anti-Christian, and it was the occultism. It had nothing to do with the racial background of the people. It had to do with their intense hatred of Christianity because they were energized by evil. Yes, yeah, so you see, the gotta... moment that you bring in something like anti uh, you know, you bring in uh, Nazis, it brings in this sort of um, extremist, this picture of extremism, and uh, undermines the reporting, if you will, and uh, it muddies the waters. I mean, these kids were uh, occultically inspired. Right. Yes, they were involved in the dark arts, just as Hitler was. 
they strategically planned for Hitler's birthday, possibly nothing to do with being anti-Jewish, but more because of their fascination and uh, uh, addiction to the to the dark side of evil. And of course, that was what Hitler manifested, really. That was what it's all about. Okay, thanks. Anything, anything else, John? Yes, yeah, my comment was, I, I believe uh, uh, all this was planned. I believe this was planned ahead of time and it was laid down. Is and today is being laid down as a plan, again to push us to to, to where our young children have no allegiance. They have they have no allegiance to our country. They have no allegiance to God. They have allegiance to nothing. So uh, when everything is destroyed, then, then maybe you know the, you know the, the powers to be will throw out something and they'll grasp onto it because they have nothing now. Amen to that. Well, somebody once said that when liberty leads to a loss of order, then the demand for order will lead to a loss of liberty. And uh, there is a master plan out there, and if you haven't seen my video, uh, The Brotherhood of Darkness, let me recommend that to you, or you can uh, get just the audio tape of it. But it'll explain the master plan uh, behind this whole Luciferian movement. And, of course, we're really looking forward uh, to this new video that, uh, that they're going to be putting out next week. Hey, thanks so much, John. All right, buddy. Take it easy. And you too. Thanks for stay for staying up late at night to listen to us. All right, you're welcome. Bye bye. All right, bye. And I think uh, John's right. I mean, this is uh, these kids knew exactly what they were doing. Uh, and well, I think what makes John. So I, I'm sorry for interrupting. Sorry, Stan. Continue. No, you go right ahead. Well, thank you. Um, when John said that the you know it's strategically planned, I think the fact that if we go back into the history of the origins of the school of Columbine and see that this is one of the social engineering schools that was put up, rather like the uh, Bill Clinton's um, governor school, uh, that these are these were and to train in a sense the new thinking of um, of the youth and and yet I think the incredible and glorious thing of it is that what was meant for tragedy is triumphing because the young souls that were so stunned almost a year ago in Columbine see that God was important and it was a very short time after that in fact I think by the following Tuesday uh, after that horrible massacre that prayer was brought back into the schools of Columbine so here the youth are fighting the courts and the system and trying to show, uh, I mean, obviously knowing that God came back into the school that day because all these kids were praying. Amen to that. Let's go to Nathan. Hi, Nathan. Hi, uh, good evening. Well, spiritual evil is alive and well. Fortunately, the powers of the light are there to, to do battle. Um, great show. I just wanted to make one correction. Um, Mr. Klebold was not Jewish. It was, his, I believe, his great-grandfather on his father's side, and, but I believe his mother and the rest of his family uh, were Gentile. However, I do think that the point made earlier by the previous caller, um, I didn't hear everything he said because uh, I was on the line, but I, I got the sense that what he was trying to say is that the media introduced the divide-conquer thing into this, that oh. sort of playing the racial elements and what it really is about is the spiritual dimension that should unify everyone of all races and ethnic backgrounds on the side of good and which um, we should oppose evil and the forces of evil, the very real satanic power of evil wherever it manifests. Uh, I think John's point was that the media was trying to say this was neo-Nazi, of where it, he was saying it was a cult, and of course they're both the same. Uh, of course he is, and but the average individual doesn't understand uh, the occult foundation of Nazism. But he was absolutely right. Well, uh, he and the media are both right. Although right. I agree with him that the media has uh, distorted this whole thing. And anyways, I just wanted to make that one correction. Okay. That Mr. Klebold was not indeed uh, Jew. Uh, and thank you very much. Great show. Uh, yeah, that is because it has to come through his mother. Right. Okay. Thank you. Sure. Uh, and that's the traditional, uh, the traditional uh, Jewish belief that uh, the uh, heritage is passed through the mother rather than through the father. Uh, do you have any comment on that at all, Carol? No, I think that's a good point, and I think both your listeners have got the bigger picture, which is the divide and conquer angle, and and that's what this is about. You know, when you see these, um, uh, here we are a year almost later with the with um, the whole Columbine disaster, and it was very interesting that when Clinton went to Columbine with the first lady, that 
the absence of talking about God in their speech was so blatantly dishonoring because, you know, when Clinton has been on other um, times where he's sort of come forward and does his little bit of talking or if there have been deaths, he's gone to the family and talked about God. But here at Columbine, he did not mention the incredible pulling together of the Christian community, the ministers, the the Christian youth workers, but uh, by the absence, it was so blatantly um, obvious that there was some kind of religious apartheid going on here. I think that's an excellent term for it. Well, you know, it's, it's, it's something that we shouldn't let die, and I'm so glad that you are uh, putting together a, a film on this, because I think it's such, it's such an important message that we have to get out across America. And I just hope that this will have the same impact that your uh, Clinton Chronicles did, and that uh, we moved, uh, you know, I bet we moved uh, almost close to a thousand copies of that. I, maybe not quite that many, but I don't think we've ever had a video that moved as well as that one did. And let's just hope that this one will, because uh, our message here at Radio Liberty is that we're involved in a spiritual battle that's being fought on a political, ideological, and cultural battlefield. And Columbine uh, just uh, certainly uh, it was a perfect example of that. Well, thank you, Dr. Stan. You have been such a wonderful support on our Jeremiah films, and you're, you're, uh, we can't do without people like you on the radio, and you're such a wonderful voice out there at a time when we desperately need to stick together as the alternative media. And, of course, we're trying to be silenced through this hideous um, lawsuit, um, not with the Clinton Chronicles, but with another one of our, our videos on Clinton, which was the obstruction of justice. And uh, the $16 million lawsuit in Arkansas came at a time when, um, well, just all the legal bills that have come with it, and we, we're finding the pinch is getting tighter and tighter and tighter as the legal bills continue and trying to fight off these people who are trying to silence independent voices out there that are speaking um, for a higher goodness, a higher justice, a higher truth. And, you know, they do not like being called to any kind of moral accountability. In well, fact, I don't know, did you, have you seen the recent, the book, the, um, I hate to even give this book any, any y mention, y but... Hunting the President? Yes. <laughs> did you see that? <laughs> right. Uh, that, uh, well, you were actually the star of that, you and your husband, uh, that uh, <laughs> book, what's the title of it, Hunting Clinton or Hunting the President? No, Hunting the President. Hunting the President. Hunting the President, and they have tried to do a wonderful piece of absolutely horrible yellow journalism and discrediting um, those of you and us, and we, you certainly fall into the camp with us in exposing evil and lies, and um, they, I mean, they went after our films that you wouldn't, you'd wonder what on earth you, what they'd make go after the films that are in that book. We, we made a film on evolution called The Evolution Conspiracy and another one on Halloween called Halloween Trick or Treat. And these are the films that were mentioned in this book in trying to discredit us. And I suppose I looked over the whole thing thinking, now, why would this be? And, of course, when the whole uh, culture and society in America is lifting up Halloween, it's now become the third number, well, I think number three of holidays after. Actually, I think it's um, maybe even number two after uh, the New Year, but anyway, Halloween is way up there <laughs> on uh, celebration of holidays with the New Year and Christmas, and uh, so you know, they I suppose they discredit our, our world view through our film Halloween Trick or Treat and Evolution Conspiracy because, of course, it's a world view of um, lifting up creationism as opposed to uh, evolutionism. So it was a it was a very extraordinary book. But but you have to understand that these people look at the world differently. I mean, we look at a, a glass, it's half full. They look at it as half empty, and they say it's terrible. Look, it's half empty, you know. Look, uh, look at all that water that's been used. And when The hardest thing for me to really uh, uh, realize uh, was that there are people who look at the world entirely differently. Everything they see is a mirror image of what I see, and what I think is good, they think is bad. What I think is bad, they think is good. And that's why they would attack you on these things, is because they're coming from an entirely different point of view. Well, it's such an anti-God worldview. You're, you, you've said it. It's, 
there is just no graciousness and, and no thankfulness and no gratitude towards the Creator God that has given us everything. You ended up. We've got a three-minute break here, and would you like to just uh, get a glass of water or a cup of coffee, and, and then we'll be back here, and we'll open up our lines at 464-8295 or one 888 2 for Liberty. If you're out there listening to us, you'd like to talk to Carol Matriciana of President of Jeremiah Films. This is Dr. Stan back here at Radio Liberty, and of course this is the time when I have to mention that Radio Liberty is listener-supported, and if you're out there listening to us, either here in the central coast of California or out across America, like John was in North Carolina, and I, I remember it's after midnight back there, so he's got to be a pretty dedicated listener, but if you're one of the people who are listening to us, we hope that many of you will decide right now, if you're not already a member of the Radio Liberty family, that you're going to join. And for a suggested gift of $20 a month or more, why, you can uh, get our four best tapes in the month. You'll get our monthly newsletter. But more than that, you're going to be helping us to uh, do what we do, and that is to bring the truth about the spiritual battle in which we're engaged to people all across America. And, of course, if you have access to the Internet, uh, why, you can pull down our uh, our. Uh, uh, tapes up there. We have archived about 60 programs, uh, not the older ones, but we have our modern ones, and you can get those off the internet, and you can get our letter. It's up on the internet. But, of course, if you do that, you're not helping us, and uh, we hope that you'll believe in what we're doing and realizing that we're right out here in the front lines, and we need those people behind us, and uh, some new gentlemen today just uh, joined the Radio Liberty family, and we are getting people all across America who are willing to take a stand with us. And as we uh, pick up more in the way supporters, then we pick up new radio stations. And as you know, we now have a new radio station up in Portland, and we're really exciting about that. <laughs> of course, last, uh, last Saturday, uh, uh, we uh, ordinarily have it broadcast by satellite up there uh, from our Los Angeles affiliate. And, of course, the satellite was down. So uh, here, at, uh, just a couple of minutes before we're supposed to go on the air, and they don't have a program. Uh, they can't get the satellite to work. But we got around that. They had one of our earlier film, uh, earlier programs. Uh, but hopefully things will be working better in the future. Anyway, uh, but we do have an opportunity now to be on three uh, excellent stations here on the Pacific Coast, in addition, of course, to our mainstay, which is KKMC. Uh, uh, here where we're heard every afternoon on the Central Coast in our shortwave and uh, Internet hookups, but it's all expensive, and so we hope that many of you out there will say, I believe in what they're doing, and I want to help. And again, the telephone number to call, one 800 5 hiv War. That's 1-800-544-8927, or you can write to us at Post Office Box 13 in Santa Cruz, 95063, and we'd love to welcome you into the Radio Liberty family. Well, I guess this afternoon. Last hour is Carol Matriciana of Jeremiah Films, and of course, I don't know how many of you know Pat, but her pa husband uh, really has been on the front lines of this battle, and with his uh, video, the Clinton Chronicles, of course, he infuriated uh, the uh, uh, the Clinton administration because he showed uh, really the just. The, well, the depravity that exists there. I don't suppose there's any other explanation to give. And then, of course, uh, this tragic lawsuit, which I believe is being brought, my personal opinion, uh, it's payback time. Now, uh, last time we had Pat on, uh, and we actually put out a telephone number for a fund. Uh, one of our listeners uh, sent, I think it was something like four or $500 to the help defray the legal expenses, because you're talking about uh, thousands of dollars every week. Uh, Carol, do you have a, a fund, uh, just in case anybody out there would like to contribute to help you uh, as you continue this fight on appeal to try to get this whole what I believe is a scurrilous lawsuit, uh, you know, put to an end so you can go on with your life and your productions. Uh, is there any place if people were interested in helping that they could send funding? 
Oh, you're so gracious, Dr. Stan. Yes, if they called our 800 number, 828-2290, and uh, talked about the Legal Defense Fund, they could get all the information on that, or, of course, they could... Uh, I think that would be the best way, the uh, 800 number, 828-2290, Legal Defense Fund. And uh, that's the same number to call if there's uh, any orders to... Um, for any of the videos that we have talked about, and uh, I have got some wonderful, wonderful specials, 15% uh, off regular price and 20% off and 30% off, depending on the quantity of uh, 3, 5, or 10 videos. But we've got some wonderful choices, and they can choose from any of up to our 80 videos, because uh, as, as you know, every little purchase helps and um, we can just carry on the good fight of putting that money into more and more productions. Um, now let me just tell you, if, if our listeners are out there and you would like to uh, get a list of the videos, I mean the, uh, they have so many catalog, wonderful ones. A free catalog. Yeah. Alright, that's 800-828- uh, 2290. And then, of course, uh, there's all sorts of videos. We've carried them in the past. We've seen them in the past. And they're really of the top-notch quality. But more than that, uh, they have a message that Gods of the New Age is one of the uh, greatest videos you'll ever see. Uh, and, of course, there's just a whole myriad of them. There's God's story, obstruction of justice, the Mina connection. Uh, uh, you have 80 of them? Almost 80. And then we've got this column by the one um, on the tribute for what the, those picking up the bloodstained torch of the martyrs have been doing for the last year, and that's called as a burning fire. And uh, then we've got another hot one, and I'm going to send you a copy of that. That should be finished in about three, four weeks after we've uh, done as a burning fire, and that is called Death by Entertainment. Are we being killed by the media? <laughs> being killed by entertainment. Is entertainment killing us to death? And of course, I love your most one of your most recent one was "Let My Children Go." I guess that's about a year old, but uh, it simply goes into the educational system. So give that number a call: eight hundred eight two eight two two nine zero. Get a catalog. Uh, outstanding videos that we uh, recommend highly. And also, if you know, uh, Pat is on the front lines of this battle, and if there's any way you can help him financially. Uh, I would appreciate it, and I know they would, too. Right now, we've got Mike on the line from Santa Cruz. Hi, Mike. How are you doing? Uh, hi, Stan. I'm uh, doing good. Um, uh, in the beginning of the program, Carol started talking about girls and young women getting caught up in the occult, etc. Uh, and it really was sort of the Internet. Uh, you know, now the Internet, you can bring the occult right into your, into your bedroom. Right. And so uh, down this vein, I wondered how familiar she is, Carol is, with the term Lilith. And What's the term? Lilith. Very, yeah. very familiar, Mike. I wonder if you could talk about what you know, what you've seen and heard. Well, of course, it's, uh, it, it's a uh, information uh, page, if you will, on witchcraft, on Wiccan, on uh, the new... Phase. And one of the interesting things with witchcraft is it is so, it is adapting, it has changed. Um, there are as many denominations within uh, Wiccanism, if you will, of uh, Wicca they call it, as there are probably different theologies within what is very, very loosely termed as Christianity. And so uh, this particular page that you're talking about is a particular denomination, if you will, a, 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 a particular um, theology of witchcraft. And, of course, witchcraft can range from... I think primarily the things that I would say, the, the foundation of the new pagan Wiccan thinking is a reverence towards Mother Earth, usually the concept that... The earth is here to be adored, preserved, maintained, looked after, and through the earth, if you treat the earth well, the earth will give you back the energy, and that you can manipulate forces through ritual magic and all that sort of thing to be able to um, use the energy of the earth, as they believe, to put into creative powers, whether it's through visualization, whether it's through whatever it is you want. I mean, I don't know if you remember a little bit earlier this month that there were labyrinths for peace, a path to inner peace that was set up 
um, outside on the east lawn of the U.S. Capitol. I mean, incredible. The, this, and this here again was, in a sense, promoting paganism and witchcraft, but through what was known as an art form, a labyrinth put onto the east lawn of the U.S. Capitol. And its whole purpose was to perpetuate peace and politics um, and asking uh, various lobbyists and politicians and um, residents, etc., and bystanders to walk through this maze and be able to do walking meditation, to have tranquil thoughts and be inspired to bring peace and politics together. I mean, it's nothing except good old-fashioned Eastern mysticism. Okay, Mike, well, anything else? Uh, yeah, well, that was on government property, right? Yes, what it was, to, uh, but yeah. portrayed as art. Where, 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 is, where is the Supreme Court when we need them? The separation of religion and state, <laughs> religion and politics? No, it's uh, Christianity. Because, yeah. uh, they don't care about occultism. In fact, it was occultism that motivated that Supreme Court decision, and it was about time people began to realize that. Now, but Mike, the, what was it particularly that you wanted to know about Lilith? Uh, well, whatever you know, and well, also as it's being practiced among uh, young women today, you're probably aware of the Lilith Fair, the music concerts that went on. I think it was just 97, 98, 99. It petered out last summer. Yes, and of course, this, that, that, this is the perpetuation of uh, femaleness, which is all part, again, of uh, pagan. The new Wiccan thought is that the female energy or the female the goddess worship as they see it that the female energy the goddess is more important or has more power than the male which is here again an upside downness of the patriarchal um, authority of God which is turned upside down so that the female power is worshipped and uh, brought in you know which of course we see in certain aspects of lesbianism and here again all part of pagan practice now is there a relationship between uh, witchcraft and uh, lesbianism. I, I know that I'm sure not every uh, lesbian is, is into witchcraft, but is there uh, some sort of an underlying uh, uh, relationship there? Well, in the sense, Stan, that, um, <laughs> you know, I suppose the question is that is there <laughs> the same thing could be asked about the gay, the homosexual man. I think it's a doorway into the occult, if you will. The, way, the fact that you're involved in a relationship that is anti-biblical, and the moment that you get into that, then you have a doorway open to you to continue in other um, anti-biblical behavior. But I think it's by association a lot, because you'll find that those that are... Um, and I'm not saying all lesbians, I'm certainly not... I don't mean to generalize, but usually you'll find that they will go with like-minded people, they'll be involved in lesbian um, um, get-togethers and tete tates if you will, which in a sense lead, if one pursues the deeper truths of it, into uh, Wiccan uh, spirituality because uh, that is a sort of um, projection, if you will, if, if you want to get into it. But yes, in a very loose sense, it certainly opens the doorway into um, female, the lifting up of female energies, which is all part of Wiccan pagan practice. And so it's really, a, it, it's, it's, you start out in revolt against God, and then, of course, you can take the next step, is what you're saying. Yes, and I think the attraction comes in basically as a, a sort of uh, lust, a, a fulfillment of, human, um, well, I suppose the very initial start is just wanting to be loved and reaching out in love and companionship, and then you find that that gets you into the wrong type of relationship, either with a male or a female, and ultimately, um, those kind of like-minded people, if they do want a spirituality, they certainly wouldn't find it in an orthodox Christian Bible-believing um, fellowship, and so they will lean towards where they're accepted, and there's certainly within paganism, it, it is an accepted uh, homosexuality, and uh, lesbianism is, is much more accepted. All right, uh, Mike, did you have any other questions? Um, no, well, I'm trying to target the Lilith Fair, and um, why, see, that, 
the musicians there were pretty much the main line of popular female musicians um, through the 90s or the late 90s. And um, why they would go for this Lewis theme, um, I, I'm over these last few years, I just keep looking for what might they really be doing down underneath that would be a, a, a departure from what they normally would be presenting in the form of white magic or, you know, earth worship. There's a deeper, darker core that, has, that goes back to um, Hebrew Gnosticism, uh, the Greek pantheon, and then also back to the Garden of Eden um, in association with the serpent itself. Okay, thanks so much, Mike. Right. Bye-bye. Uh, what about the Burning Man? I know that Pat went to this uh, this great concert that's put on in the a desert, I believe, in Nevada. And uh, you know, for our listeners out there, I mean, you've got what tens of thousands of people go to that. Actually, thirty-five thousand. When we filmed that last summer, and went to the Nevada Salt Flats, and here once again, very, very similar to this labyrinth for Peace Two Thousand, where this sort of walking meditation, if you will, a total fast was portrayed as an art form. The same thing happens with the Burning Man. It is the, the, these are presented as art festivals, expressions of art, and um, and therefore they, it's sort of not presented as a, as an alternative religious spirituality. It comes in with free expression, artistic license. And here were 35,000 pagans that came together for um, a 10-day celebration, and it was the most amazing uh, display of every type of worship, hedonism, uh, narcissistic um, uh, furtherance of uh, anything went, anything went from, from nudity to open homosexuality to open lesbianism to orgies in the uh, in the daylight it was a family uh, festival so there were young children there to see um, open displays of um, Depra orgiastic right. depravity and interestingly enough the theme once again it, as the as the night came up, as the the evening broke into night, and there were fire rituals and celebrations all around the hundreds of acres, it was so apparently, obviously anti-biblical, anti-Christian, uh, anti the the God of the founding fathers, with with upside down crosses, um, blood. Uh, I mean, sort of rituals of, um, there was one altar of skulls and dead animals and, and the blood of animals that was being painted over uh, some of the dancing celebrants that were involved in, in very eerie and extraordinary thumping, drummy music. It was... A, totally bizarre. And remember, Pat and I had been to India some 13 years previously to film Gods of the New Age, and we were in uh, Hindu festivals with millions and millions of disciples coming and being involved in sort of um, superstitious Eastern worship, but this festival in the Nevada Salt Flats was much scarier because it was so obviously and openly against the God of the Bible. Well, now, of course, uh, was this reported by the general media? Was anybody there from the mainline media oh, uh, to record this? There was, I, I believe that there were um, 350 Disney um, uh, um, executives and participants that were actually there. But uh, they, weren't, they weren't putting this out for the general public. Oh, well, no, the media was there. The few media that did report on it, they were very good uh, pro art expression um, pieces, and it certainly didn't go into any of the, uh, the, the, the sort of rituals and um, mystical orgies and other things that were taking place. Those weren't reported. I, I, I remember one, in, one incredible 
um, scene where this, there was an enormous big golden calf that stood about 20 foot wide and high being pulled on wheels and this um, half naked Mardi Gras girl on the top of the golden calf dancing and throwing out beads to the crowds that were around. It was even more um, uh, incredible than the film, The Ten Commandments, where Moses came down from the mountain and saw them dancing at the golden calf. It was incredible. But don't you think the symbology was there? In other words, this was exactly the same paganism uh, that the children of Israel turned to uh, when Moses had gone up on Mount Sinai. Mm-hmm. Now, uh, did you ever put that into a film? Is that available? Well, some of that is going to go into... Where, where, you know, the incredible thing with it, Stan, is it, it is borders on pornography. <laughs> I, I mean, it is pornographic, so blatantly pornographic in, in so many, so much footage that it's hard to put it into usable material because it's just so appalling. But we are... We've got some of it in our film, the As a Burning Fire, that's going to be coming out um, on the Columbine one, just to show the era where the youth today is going into such decadence. There are other, other youth that are picking up the bloodstained torch of the martyrs and pressing on to proclaim God's um, mighty and triumphant work through it. So we have got some of the footage in that. We've got some of it in our other film on... Um, the death by entertainment, and is the media killing us? And we have got another one coming out on on paganism, which we haven't put together quite yet, but it'll be coming out in that. Yeah. Well, I'm I'm really looking forward to seeing it. I'm not necessarily interested in the in the you know in the pornographic part of that, although probably one of the uh, you know. Uh, films that really had a tremendous impact in uh, or about a decade ago was a film called The Gay Agenda and that of course they, uh, you, you knew what was going on They had so that I don't know how you make those things fuzzies you can't see what's going on behind the scenes but it was oh. pretty obvious what it was about that film had such a tremendous impact as it went out across America uh, and it was actually able to block Clinton's plan for uh, you know having open homosexuality in the military it was shown to the members of the Joint Chiefs of Staff and uh, of course uh, they said no way uh, Jose Bill or whatever it is and uh, the Marines just said we're not going to do it and of course Bill I mean, your commander-in-chief and the military says, we're not going, uh, we're not going to go along with it. He had to back away. But a video can be a powerful, powerful uh, means of communicating an idea. Oh, I, I remember the, the footage that had to sit on the cutting room floor, sadly, on that, but you're right. It, it is so explicit. I think the shame is that, that these, these parades that we filmed from and a lot of that homosexual agenda were took place in the open streets and open daylight right. in a public place. It is just so shocking. Well, of course, that had, a lot of that, I think, was shot in Los Angeles and San Francisco, and I believe God is going to hold those cities responsible, and the people in those cities, and the good Christians who have not taken a stand. That That uh, is what's so unconscionable. And the churches, uh, they would rather just sit behind the scenes and say, well, it's all in God's hands, and, and I don't believe that's what God wants at all. No. I think one of the frightening things when we opened the show, we began with the Internet, and I think what's so much more frightening is that even more lurid material that we filmed at Nevada Salt Flats and on the streets of these cities with the gay marches and gay pride days is the footage that um, you can get on the Internet in, in the absolutely horrible, uh, porn, not only pornographic, material, but the occultic um, uh, teachings that you can just plug into and get connected to um, the deep, dark side of uh, occultism and the black arts. That's what's so frightening. I saw some horrible footage yesterday, um, and while we're cutting together this, this film on the media, Death by Entertainment, and to know that there are sadomasochistic um, windows, portals out there where you can actually watch people mutilating themselves and cutting their limbs off on the internet is just frightening. Well, you know, the, the, we said in the last hour that the real battle is in our minds. 
And, you know, if you have good thoughts in your minds, you are centered on the Lord. Why, you know, then the devil can't take effect on you. But uh, if your mind is full of all these wicked and evil and horrible, horrible things, uh, then, of course, you leave yourself open to uh, acting these things out. And this is what, uh, tragically, some people are doing today. And mm -hmm. I, uh, certainly uh, the boys there in Columbine were uh, watching all of these terrible video the films, the doom, and all these things, and playing the games, and their minds uh, were simply taken over by evil. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, we're leaving an awful lot of the minds of our children open. At one time, uh, before the Supreme Court intervened, local communities could block that sort of thing from coming into their communities, and it could still be done if it were not for the Supreme Court's interference. Uh, and the local communities could say to servers, you will not distribute this in our state or our communities. Uh, unfortunately, the Supreme Court, which will not allow God to be mentioned in the schools, will allow that to go into our homes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You're so right. It's so, it's so rampantly evil. And I think um, we as Christians and believers in truth and justice and right have got to stand up and take every opportunity to um, fight the good fight. And it is a good fight, you know, even though Pat and I so often are overwhelmed with, uh, as, I sh as I know you are, the, just the overwhelming pressure of having to maintain um, fighting for the good fight. It's, um, I know it would be eternally rewarding, and Pat often encourages me by just saying that uh, Jeremiah films, we, we make weapons for spiritual warfare, and our videos, are, are, we put hundreds of thousands of dollars into each of the videos so that we can give them to your listeners, the soldiers out there, so that they can take them into their communities or to a friend and to a neighbor and be educated on some of the matters and some of the subjects that they may not have the opportunity of being involved in or, or go out the way that we have into the salt flats of Nevada and, and to film 35,000 pagans or to go to India and to see the darkness of the New Age there or to interview some of the gurus or to be able to meet the, the people, Clinton's, the people around Clinton and interview the victims there. But we put all of these things into films so that um, you, your viewers can uh, take it out to a neighbor that needs help or somebody that needs to be alerted and educated and informed. So that's always what encourages us that this is a good fight and we can't do it without you and your listeners. Well, let me just give that telephone number again. It's 800-828-2290. That's 800-828-2290. Uh, give yourself a catalog. You get discounts on bulk orders. Uh, the films are excellent quality. And also, if you'd be interested in helping uh, Pat uh, as far as the ex exorbitant fees that are involved in his legal defense, uh, which I believe is just payback by the Clintons uh, to somebody who uh, told the truth about them, uh, again, that the Legal Defense Fund, and you can call that same number. Carol, uh, God bless you, and I appreciate everything that you and Pat do. Thank you, Stan, so much, and God bless you, too, and we appreciate you and Barbara. God bless. Thanks. Good night. Good night. Okay, fine. That was uh, Carol Matriciana, and I hope you enjoyed it, and pray for America. Pray for our leaders, and pray for uh, Pat and uh, Matriciana and Carol in their battle, and of course, pray for Radio Liberty, for our provision and our protection.